Hey, what's up guys? So let's take a look at how we can make a simple object pooling system inside of Unity. So our implementation today will focus on how we can make uh, the object pooling accept different types of pools. So here we've got two pools, one for the cube and one for spheres. And each one has their own ID, the prefab, a pool, as well as the parent and the size. And if we were to just want to spawn a cube, for instance, all I've got to do is drag and drop the parent and then just write the pool ID. And if I were to right click get object, as you can see, it just takes it from the pool here. And if I were to destroy this object, it will just return it to the pool. So if I come here, um, where is it? Pool manager and do this three times. So one, two times. So now we can see the pool is empty. If I were to do it another time, it just instantiates a new uh, object because the pool is empty and if I were to select all the three and then just destroy all three it just takes them back to the pool same thing works if I were to choose the sphere all I've got to do is pass in the correct ID as well as a parent if I want to or you can just leave this as to blank and get object and it just spawns the sphere so let's take a look at the scene setup although this is very simple this is basically everything so we've got a game object which acts as our pool manager all right so this will contain all the different pools that we can have for the different object types that you have for instance if you've got a bullet pool or a game a, a character pooling then you just define it here by clicking this small plus icon and defining the details and then once this has been set up next thing you have to do is to define the actual pool object, so the, the prefab itself. On the actual prefab, you don't have to include anything. For me, I just have the on object test, which basically allows me to destroy the object. But yours obviously will be from the scripting side of things. So you can just ignore this. Alternatively, you could drag and drop the pool tracker here. However, our system ensures that uh, when it instantiates the prefab, it adds the pool tracker automatically so this is not really a necessity so all that's done let's take a look at how uh, we actually made it in the code so here is the coding side of things so let's start off with the object pooling manager itself as you can see here it's a basic class we define a static a singleton pattern for the actual pooling manager itself and then just right below we've got a list of object pooler info which is basically the pools that we had um, defined earlier. On Void Awake, we, inst uh, we just reference the current instance to the uh, static field. And then we just loop through all of the object pools and initializes each and every one of them. And then we've got two methods. So one of them is the get pool, another one is spawn object. The get pool method takes in a string ID and then just finds if we have a pool that matches this ID, here we've used, uh, we are using a lambda uh, pattern. So find index, x means one object pool info from the list. And then if this object matches the pool ID, then we just return it as index. If the index is less than zero, means there is no pools available, then we just return default. And uh, if there was a pool, we just return that. And our spawn object just takes in an ID and it transform parent. Basically, it just calls the object get pool from above. And then if it was not default, so if we got a pool, then we just call info that spawn and then we just pass in our parent. Here is the actual object pooler info. Here we've got the, the different variables as we saw earlier. And then here is the method for the initialized pool. Here we just initializes the list of pool to a new list of game object. We loop through the pool size, so from zero to pool size, and then we just instantiate a new game object or the pooled object prefab at the pool parent for each increment. We add the currently instantiated object to the pool list. We deactivate it, and then we just call the next method, which is check tracker. This takes in a game object and then just checks whether or not we've got the pool tracker on it. If we did, then we just override the pool ID. 
and if we don't have one we add the uh, pool tracker and then we just override the group id next up we've got uh, the spawn method this spawn method just takes in the parent and in here <coughs> we check whether or not we actually have objects inside of the pool if we don't which means the pool is equal to zero then we'll instantiate a new prefab at the parent given and again we just call check tracker on this instantiated game object and then we just return this one else if we've got uh, objects to pull from we take the first available object so which is basically pool at position zero then we remove this game object from the pool and then we just reset the transform to the parent that we have and then we return it and then we've got a last method called recycle this takes in a game object set uh, deactivated it adds it to this pool and then just resets the parent to the pool parent and then we've got an extension method which basically allows us to as you'll see in a moment call these two methods right from a game object or transform so the first one is a static uh, method called recycle which takes in a game object as well as a string id what it does is it just finds finds a pool object info from object pooling manager as we saw earlier on and if we got an info then we just call info.recycle and we pass in the game object uh, we also have another method called spawn2 which returns a game object this one takes in a transform called parent as well as string id again we just try and find one pool info and if we do have one info we call info.spawn and we pass in parent moving on to the actual pool tracker so this is a very simple script basically this all uh, its only job is to hold the group id so then when we're actually recycling the object later on we can just refer to this script to get the group id um, for and here is the last script which is the test pooling script and the on object test script so basically these are two different scripts i have it on the same one here so the test pooling as you can see is only for instantiating uh, the game object and the way you do it is here so we have a game object called go and then we do equal to parent that spawn to and then we pass in the pool id so as you might remember the extension method this is how we use it so parent here is the transform okay so parent dot is a transform so when we do parent that spawn to it basically just executes whichever method we had earlier on and this will return a game object which we can then activate and then just do our logic to it if we want and as for the on object test basically what it does is it just called recycle on this game object itself and then we just get the pool tracker from our game object and access the group id so if you guys followed this tutorial then you should have a fully functional pooling system inside of unity again this is very basic and you could definitely improve upon this so if you guys found this video helpful then be sure to leave a like subscribe if you have not already and i'll see you guys next one bye